Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Isthmus City, guarded by the necromancer Narvek, and currently losing the battle, I guess, of Domain versus the Duimus Dwarven City, but it is enough to prevent people from walking through our lands without first declaring war on us, or at least annoying us. I'm not sure how it works exactly with closed borders, but we are guarding this Isthmus. We do have this awesome shrine to the Wizard King, which does nothing for us except for improves our research a little bit, doesn't help our units at all. But that's about it. In about two months, we're going to be attacked by trolls, and we're getting ready for that. And uh, overall, our empire is content, but it'll, they'll be pretty happy in two turns or two months when they get over there being bummed at Frigoberto falling and going to the void. And we are currently slightly good. But again, every time we declare war, it lowers that by 200, so that kind of sucks. Regardless, this is your last chance, by the way. This is the last episode you'll be seeing before the census closes. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend you follow the link down in the description and go and vote in the census. Everyone who is logged into Google will get one vote, and you get to vote not only on who will be the elected representatives of each of the five elected wards of Aurelia. The sixth ward, the Ward of the Sea, is appointed to Admiral Emerson, our Master of Ships. And uh, also, I'll have some questions on there, if you haven't seen already, that have to do with quality of life and just general Aurelian census stuff. So, roleplay your hearts out. Alright, let's go. All of our heroes practically have leveled up. That is pretty amazing. Let's level up Gaspard, actually. Quickly. Charge command. And armor piercing. In case he gets attacked by these creatures. Actually, while we're doing this, let's put these guys together. Can we do that? No? No, we can't. Please. There we go. There we go. And just in time, it looks like. Closely matched, they say. It's on. I mean, this is incredible. I'm not even sure what we can do here. We do have plenty of mana. Alright, Lost Mariners, let's line up. We might want to use these webs that they have access to, or nets. Alright, horse archers, let's pull you back a little bit. Let our knights take the brunt of it. Alright. Let's go stone skin on Gaspard. Alright, don't be a hero, Gaspard. I need you to come out of this one alive. What else do we have? Well, let's just stone skin everyone. Alright. Oh, man. Their arrows aren't doing crap. Alright. Well, let's do what we came to do. Holy moly. That's doing nothing. I mean, these, these guys are nothing but meat shields. Can we get to this guy? No, out of range. 
Oh, no, we can. Okay. Still, though, we can't... Can't really hurt him. Oh, man. These poor guys got stuck back here. Gaspard. Six times two, that's not really going to help. But it's something. But if it's taking us this much trouble just to take one guy down, uh, this is not, this is not going to go well for us. And here they come. And they just took out a unit of stone-skinned knights. Okay. Alright, one down. Let's target the ones attacking... Gaspard. That didn't do any good at all. Can you guys pull out? They can't without being attacked. Come on. Come on. Yes. Ensnared in the net. All right. But he's resisted, unfortunately. Come on. Dang it. All right. He's ensnared too. Now we're in business. Let's take out this guy. All right, Gaspard. Let's see. Stone skin on these guys. These guys are unfortunately pretty much already on death's door. These mounted archers. Oh, sprint. Excellent. There we go. So they're actually decent, you know, with their arrows. All right. Yeah, those knights aren't going to last, unfortunately. Our poor horse archers are holding their own, but... There's only so much they could do. We're completely outclassed here. Might as well take this guy down while he's in a net. Oh, come on. Seriously? Somebody take him down. Alright. Can't even reach him. Okay. Um... Just help Gaspard out of the pinch here. Finish off these guys. All right, Gaspard. You're at 65 health. He will retaliate. 7 to 11. It's got to be done. Gaspar is not designed just to sit there and let other people fight for him. Oh, 
crap. Alright, guys. This is it. Gaspard's in trouble. Help him out. Nice. Alright. Excellent. These Mariners are basically making the difference here. Nice! Alright, Gaspard. I'm going to pull you a little bit back. What can we do here? What can we do here? Phoenix Warrior on the Knights. Alright, let's see what he does. Wow, that knight gets a medal. Holy crap. We ended up losing one knight and one mounted archer. No, I'm sorry, two knights and a mounted archer. Everyone else survived and we took out seven tier four Archons. Alright. I guess Bard knows when it's time to head back to Druze. We took down their... Took down their base. That was enough. Holy moly. Good work, Gaspard. You should gain another level for that. Alright. Off the beaten path. Irregulars. Yeah. Our research is really good right now. Killing spree. Sure. Anya, okay, what do you want? Dampening field weapon kit, target friendly infantry or pikeman unit gains the fire blunderbuss, sabotage, and throw net abilities until end of combat. That might be useful if we gave her a bunch of pikemen, which this city can produce. But that's very situational. Ironclad Baroness 3. Let's keep, let's do that. That'll unlock some cool stuff. Such as... Well, something. Gave me something, I remember. Either way. Alright. Satura. Vow of Poverty. That'll help a little bit, obviously, with the money this army costs. But we're doing pretty well on money. So we might just want to make her more strong. Monk, level 2. Now she has a whole bunch of spells and healing and convert. Interesting. Okay. Leonis. So we're moving you down the technologist path. Preston Garvey. Dirty half dozen. We gave that to the other guy. Blitz Maneuver? Situational. All these spells are situational. Most of the unit spells aren't really that great, in my opinion. Mastermind. Break Control is always good to have. Even this guy gained a level. Why, I don't know. But I think, okay, so we've already got him. He's, he's too Mastermind already. Hmm. Shadow form. Fuses target friendly unit with the shadows, rendering physical obstructions and attacks ineffective. That's pretty neat. All units in the hero's army gain plus one poison. That's what we're going to do. And break control. And Frigoberto. Defensive formation. Friendly units gain plus four defense. Minus two strength and total awareness. 
Works only in units that are already buffed by certain Warlord spells. So that's not that useful. Warmonger. All units in Hero's Army gain Victory Rush. Let's wait for that, actually. That seems like a really awesome skill. Ikara. Okay, so her deal is she's going to be mostly a spellcaster. So we probably want to give her spells. And the ability to cast more spells. Okay. Narvik. Master of Skeletons. Every time a unit from the hero's army kills an enemy in melee, all ray skeletons are healed. Greater reanimate undead. Target corpse of an undead unit is raised. Necromancy 2. Control undead. Your units get inflict curse until the end of combat. That's pretty good. Does he have enough mana to cast that, though? He does have 35. I guess he does, yeah. Aura of Darkness. Or we can give him more spell points. Eh, let's give him the Dark Gift. Why not? Ignatius! What does he have? Enchant Armor. Age 2, Stunning Touch, Steel Enchantment. Elemental magic. Unlocks Mend, Magical Being, and Mentor. What what Mentor does. This unit is immune to mind control. That actually might be useful against Duimus. Alright, Wanderer's Way. Let's get a barracks real quick so we can build some defenders. It's our least defended city, I think. Leticia. I guess a siege workshop. Arcticana. Arctica's Embassy. Unlocks the production of yetis for this city. Prevents the construction of Shimmering Throne Room. Oh, well, we might want that, though. All right. So this gives yetis. What does the Shimmering Throne Room give? 200 people and 100 happiness. But that's it. I don't know, man. That doesn't seem... Normally happiness is good, but this town is pretty damn happy as it is. They're super happy, actually. Like, so this is un... The Shimmering Throne Room is useless to us. What's the other thing? There's one other thing that said it could do. The Cryo Preservation Chamber. The hell is that? Is that all from this thing? The city gains 300 undead. Okay. So it seems to me, folks, and I'm sure you'll agree, that Arctica's embassy is really the only thing worth building here. Because the... I mean, I guess if you had a city like that the people hated the ice and they were just miserable and unhappy, then the Shimmering Throne Room that makes them a little bit extra happy might be useful. But I just can't think of any reason to build this. Unless, sometimes the descriptions don't tell you, unless there's some kind of unit that you can build with the Shimmering Throne Room that... But I don't think so. So I'm going to go with Arctica's Embassy. I want some frickin' Yetis. Alright, Helia. The plus one domain radius, I mean, we pretty much have the entire land anyway. Eh, it won't add this gold mine. It'll add this Flow Rock Citadel, I guess. Flow Rock Quarry. High morale. This doesn't hurt. We could use more units, though, to fight the trolls. Maybe a unit of priests. We haven't built priests in a while. They're kind of situational, but they do help in healing. 
Oh, our war breed is here. What a handsome fellow. Wow. So he is human, according to this. According to this, he is human. Of some kind or another. Goethe was the warlord's favorite concubine, a beastly woman, more ogre than person. Still, he lavished gifts on her, and in return she gave him many babies. I used to be jealous until I saw his adolescent children and realized female seduction would never give the warlord what he wanted. Goethe's daughters were huge, destructive beings, more intent on walking through a door than figuring out how to open it. Inhumanly strong, huge, and they scarcely noticed when you beat them. His war breed were not offspring to be coddled, but born to destroy. The Warlord's Harem by Scarlet Mallow, Concubine. Interesting. All right, Aurelia. Monument of the Ancient God King. That might be worth doing. Hall of Chivalry. Let's do the monument. We're not going to build the... Uh, Pikemen here, anyway. Nordland. 30 gold income, that'll give us 60 gold. Yeah, it's worth it. Tamarisk Ball. Is not making any money. So the trading center wouldn't make much sense. Cavalry is what we want to build here, right? So I guess... Warhol... This place is going to be making the pikemen. Pikemen are not irregular, so the mercenary camp won't necessarily do them any good. We do want a guardhouse, though. Give them additional rank. All right. Aquaresia. What do we have? What fun options do we have here? I guess the market would make the most sense. Because it takes 20 turns to get your money back from it. And uh, so the earlier you start, the better. Stoicana. All right, well, the Dome of the Ancestors, I guess, to get Cavaliers. Stoic and Cavaliers. What does this give me again? Tree of Life. Regrowth. But only Irregulars, though. So we don't really, really even need this for the time being. We don't even have a shrine. Or an observatory. We've been really focusing on troops for this place. This will take up all of our money. But we'll be able to have Stoic and Cavaliers out. Or a market. Trolls are going to be here in one turn. Ah, money, I guess. We'll get there eventually. Oh, good. These guys are back. Uh-oh. Crap. I know they're going to go straight for this hero and try to take him out. And we can't get there. Son of a gun. Centurion. Be the first to have 100 units. We won that. Reward. All of your units level up instantly. Okay, that's why all of our heroes leveled up. Because we were the first. So we're getting all kinds of Empire quests now. Druze. Druze is just going to sit tight. I don't know what to do about Druze. Until these guys are taken out, Druze is never going to be really safe. Okay. Yeah, I know it's going to happen next turn. Satura is kind of trapped here. Let's get her on the water. Let's, let's take these guys out once and for all. One way or the other. Leona's going to stay here. Preston's going to stay here. You guys are going to garrison this. Narvik. Stay, I guess. The war breed up there. 
Wow, he can walk on water, apparently. Neat. Alright. To end the episode, let's Frigoberto and Ikara take out another ruin. Same thing, Mass Curse, we're used to it. All right, so looks like they have three units of bards this time. So let's uh, move everyone a little bit back so as not to be charmed by them. Oh wow, they can do it from a distance. But Ikara resisted it. Alright, enough funny games. Both still a La draconian, huh? But they don't have any movements, so that's fine. Meanwhile, I don't know where you guys get off thinking you can shoot at Ikara and live to tell about it. Well, even with bad morale, we still take him out. Okay, Frigoberto, will you do the honors, please? Alright. These two I don't think can do anything. Oh, guess I was wrong. They can die. Alright, what do you get here? Faithful Cassock of the Battle Healer. Holy Champion deals an additional plus 5 damage against undead monster and dedicated to evil units. I think Gaspard would like that. What does this do? Also, Holy Champion. This is better, though, because it gives not only Holy Champion, but also it gives an additional plus 1 resistance. And we're waiting. Yes, right. We're waiting on Frigoberto to give him the next level of stuff. All right, what's this? What does this do exactly? Let's take it. Actually, Sarandi, I'd rather you stay alive. All right. Brown leather scaled tunic and the Cult of Storms insignia. 80% shock protection, cave concealment and resistance. Yeah, I want this, but nobody can actually uh, get it. We need to. Maybe we can have Satura pick it up on our way up, although that's kind of out of her way. All right, well, we've cleared this place out. Let's head on up to pick up our war breed. And then I guess we'll go for this. Is legendary worse than epic? I would guess so, because if this is yellow and it's not that bad, then. Red, you'd think, would be more bad than orange. Maybe we go orange, red, and then where's, the, where's something mythical? Probably this. Yeah, purple. So this is probably the worst. Except for, like, maybe this here. Why aren't you... Yeah, why are you flying around pissing Drews off? Why don't you attack this guy? All right, Sarandi's so gonna stay there. And we're about ready to take the city, although we forgot to clear the area out. So we've got nymphs and fairies and orcs, so obviously we can't build the city here. What does this thing do again? Dang it. Dang it. All right. 
That was a bad move on my part. No, Ignatius, just stay here. Where's actually the center of town? Is this? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is the end of this turn and... Or this episode, I'm sorry. And next episode, I will announce the winners and the results of the census. So I hope you enjoy participating in that. I hope you enjoy watching this series and where we're at. We're kind of just consolidating right now because the trolls are about to attack. But as soon as that's done, we can move against Zoki. And we might want to just go ahead and move against the dwarf. So the underground is completely ours. Camille has pretty much left us alone. She's staying off in her area. Uh, we might have Frigoberto and, and uh, Ikara take on an epic level dungeon. That is the, uh, the libraries. See how those go. See if we can hack it. And uh, then also we'll continue to produce war breeds and hopefully maybe get some Manticore riders in Aurelia so that Frigoberto and uh, Ikara, while they are touring the land, looking at all the different shrines and sites of Lost Power, because remember she is Ikara the Seeker, which lets her know where all these sites of Lost Power are. And we're basically conglomerating all of the findings we get from this for the benefit of Stoica and Aurelia. And by Stoica, of course, I mean the goddess, not the town. That's the reason why Frigoberto and Ikara are doing this. Meanwhile, Anya is here in Farmeria, guarding the Northern Passes, and she's doing an excellent job preserving the integrity of our empire as acting exarch of Aurelia. And soon we'll be able to meet who our wards, our wardens are. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. This is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. Have a good one.